Tonight on The Art Show, we meet an artist who's just mad about cows, Sydney's Centennial Park, the subject of an elaborate Federation rescue. When a man wants to vent his spleen, there's always talkback radio. That's the subject of this week's monologue, Dreamtown. Backstage visits the Women's Circus, now in its 10th year, and tutus and point shoes like you've never seen before. Fragmented cows, abstracted cows, cow upon cow upon cow. Artist John Kelly's focus on the bovine subject has been so thorough and enduring that not surprisingly, this his latest exhibition is called More Fucking Cows. Kelly's obsession with a cow began as a young man when he first heard the World War II story about William Dobell's cows. Australia was looked like it was going to be invaded by Japan and I think the Australian government panicked a bit and put all the artists out to work and Bill Dobell's job was to make camouflage cows which they put on the grass airstrips in New South Wales and with his partner in crime Joshua Smith uh, who apparently had to paint cabbages on the on the concrete runways um, and it was in an effort to disguise the airfields from Japanese bombers. The idea of Australia's greatest artists being commissioned to create decoys such as life-size paper mache cows tickled Kelly's sense of the absurd. Yeah, I think that might reflect something of my own personality that, uh, that I quite like the absurd and you know, I'm very, very, I grew up watching Monty Python's Flying Circus and, and, and was influenced by things like that, yeah. An autre monde. While Australian artists weren't alone in using the art of disguise to fool wartime enemies, few have ever been as inspired by a subject's relationship to its landscape and reality as Kelly. So this element of camouflage and concealment has influenced your work quite a lot, hasn't it? Yeah, I think you know, there's an underlying premise there of art and camouflage. You know, they've got linked histories with painting obviously being about illusion and reality and, and, and what's real and what's not. Melbourne born and bred, for the past few years Kelly has been living in London and is enjoying increasing international success. Last year, he was the talk of Paris when his massive sculpture, Cow Up a Tree, dominated the Champs-Élysées. It was inspired by the image of cows being caught in trees during Australian floods and the thought of what could have happened if William Dobell's airstrip had been flooded. The image of the Cow Up a Tree is becoming a very iconic image. Uh, it's been seen absolutely everywhere in France. Now when you speak about to people about the cow, they say, oh, the cow, <laughs> la vache. It was fantastic, though, the response. What's going to happen to cow up a tree? Uh, well, it is coming back to Melbourne, and um, it should be installed in Melbourne uh, in the next six to eight weeks. Whereabouts? Uh, well, I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to tell you, but if you... I think you should. <laughs> um, it's going to go to the Docklands. Uh, it'll be part of the Docklands precinct. Nice and close to the water, so it looks like it's been washed up? Uh, well, it will be right, right on the waterfront, which is uh, I'm really happy about. And I'm really happy that it, it's actually made its way back, back to Melbourne. In the meantime, Kelly has expanded his visual repertoire to include more stuff of Australian animal legend, most notably Farlap. What do you think it says of Australia's culture that Farlap is seen as a horse with a nation's soul on its back? I like Farlap because he's kind of an Australian icon and it's a very strange icon to have whereas other countries tend to have, you know, their war heroes or, 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 or different things that they celebrate and we celebrated a horse and not only that, we, we had him stuffed and, and exhibited in a museum and taxidermy is such an interesting thing too, to recreate something that was alive but is no more, so that's my fascination. I guess that goes back to that idea of camouflage and what is real and what is not, um, to, to, that painting can both reveal and conceal. Kelly has also given Dobell's cows and Farlap their first exotic animal companion. His inclusion of a zebra in recent paintings was inspired by the zebra's recurrence in English painting from the late 18th century and his own alien status in England. 
I've taken the zebra, which I actually found in a suburban garage in Melbourne, as an image, I think, of something of the colonial, something of the exotic that uh, the English are very good at, and going finding the exotic and bringing it back. Um, and possibly, you know, I see that as maybe a reference back to me sort of being in England, it's, it's not really my home. Um, and that, uh, that it's, it's, again, it's a very visual image that uh, when juxtaposed against the English landscape, uh, is not unlike the cow when it's juxtaposed against the Australian landscape, in that the, the, the cow is not an Australian natural animal. Um, thus, its camouflage, its markings, don't actually work with the landscape, they work against it. And the zebra does the same thing in the English landscape. John Kelly's next project is a written history of artists William Dobell and Joshua Smith during World War II. His latest paintings and sculpture are on show at Niagara Gallery in Melbourne until November 25.